Yo, Del Larson here. Welcome to the last episode of this chilly, trappy, loopy stuff here, which is the drums. So these are the drums, but in the previous episodes we went through all the instruments. So these are the, the full loop, this is the full loop. I muted the effects and the vocal loop because we, uh, which is not mine, I mean, I didn't make these sounds. This is a effect loop from one of my older pack, and this is a vocal loop from a different pack, from a different person. What a shame. Anyway, so we have the drums, a kick, the hi-hat, and the clap. Sort of clappy stuff. So let's start with the easiest one here, it, which is the kick. It contains two layers, a noise layer, and the kick itself. So pretty basic stuff here. Um, when you want to create a kick drum, I'm sure you know that you need to tweak the, the pitch envelope. So in this section, we may, uh, I mean the attack time and the attack um, pitch initial we determine the transient of the sound. Some says it's the click of the sound, but let's just say, let's just stay uh, at transient because it is more professional saying it's a click. It's very, you know, it's, it's a dumb thing or I, I don't know. It is the transient of the kick. Okay, so let's stay this. The decay time determines how hard the, the kick will kick. So if you want harder kick, you need to boost these up. And of course the sustain, which if you want to tune your uh, your kick drum, you need to stay at octaves. So this is why I use minus 24. And the end time is again uh, one octave layer at minus 36. I use a simple sine wave with some edit harmonics. I will tell you in one second why I did that. And I, you know, I used I used the frequency modulation a very very on on a very slight level because I didn't want that very straight, very smooth sine waves on the kick drum's tummy. I wanted some more organic, more live sounding bass, more sounding sub on the kick drum. So this is why I added those harmonics and this is why I tried to uh, FM modulate it a little, just a very little. And then <clears throat> I filtered it with a Lopez filter and added some envelope uh, on the attack, on the transient to make it, you know, I didn't want I didn't want to do to to filter all the the full kick drum because I wanted to have some tops on the transient because the pure kick drum sounds this because of the frequency modulation and on the edit harmonics on the os uh, basic oscillator on oscillator A or operator A so I wanted to filter it but I wanted to have some tops on the transient so this is this is the theory behind all the this, this very simple kick drum. Some basic EQing, compression, and this is all on the kick drum, the main kick drum. So I have this noise layer, which really is a noise. Like a well it can be very filtered clappy stuff too. Or I don't know. Anyway, let's just go through. We have this routing here, which means that we have A, B, C go out, but operator C is modulated by operator D. So this is the only difference. These, are, these go out straight and operator C is modulated and then it goes out. So operator A is a noise, uh, operator B is a so 16, Operator C is another noise looped. I always work with noise loop when I want to make some um, like clappy or, or any, anything else like, you know, uh, drum sounds, percussion or regular drum sounds. I really recommend you to use the noise looped uh, noise because it is a static noise. So if you choose white noise on every hit and every trigger, the sound will sound a lot different. But noise loop uh, can be 
you know, can be static. So it won't change over the time <clears throat> or on every trigger, every gate. Um, and on operator day, I use a square. So basically, we have three waveforms going out, two noises and one saw. And I use a slight pitch envelope on the transient again. Let's just... So very slight different <clears throat> difference, sorry, very slight difference. Sorry, something is on with my voice, I don't know. So very, very slight difference on the pitch envelope, but it definitely gives some, gives some, some, you know, interesting tone to the transient. Because basically this plays with the transient of the full kick too. They need to play together. All right, so some spread because it won't conflict with the sub because this sound doesn't have any bass frequency at all, so this is cool. And uh, some high frequency, I mean high pace filtering to get rid of the very lows. All right, so a compression. To bring up all the tails. Some limiter and the low pace filter to get rid of the very, very highs, annoying highs. Some distortion. Distortion brings out more of the body of the sound. So the basic settings here, just I pushed up the high the dynamics and a frequency shifter to make it a little more different character. I always love to play with the frequency shifter. It's a very, very cool plugin, by the way. <clears throat> if you want to design your own you know, percussion or, or interesting filler sounds. Always try to tweak that, that frequency shifter plugin. It's really awesome. Okay, so another EQ to get rid of the very, very lows. Uh, and, well, not only the very lows, everything above, uh, so, sorry, below 800 hertz. So this is the transient layer and on the whole full kick drum uh, so i mean the, the kick drum itself and the transient together uh, i applied an eq to get rid of that very annoying middle frequencies so it's a very very easy very simple kick drum but let's step to the hi-hat Uh, making a, a hi-hat sound is really easy because you have to use a pure sine wave or, well, I didn't use a pure sine wave here, but if you want, you can use that too. Uh, it will dip, It really depends on what you will use on the modulation. But anyway, always start with a simple sine wave, but with a very high frequency, very high uh, course number. So this is what I did here. I used this chain here, which means that only A will go out and A is going to be modulated with D and with B, but B will be modulated with C. So A will be modulated with the B, C group and the D. Okay, so this is the routings here. The basic, the bass sound, the bass waveform is created by edit these random, well, not very random harmonics, but these edit harmonics on a very high course, as I said, it is 30 on 31. Uh, B is, uh, well, it's a low uh, frequency <coughs> oscillator, not an LFO, sorry. <laughs> so the frequency of the, of, oh, the frequency of operator B is on low frequency. So I didn't push up the course, what I generally do. But this case, at this case, it is only on course one and some detuning. No, uh, detuning is important because you don't want that. Um, so you know you you want you really do want some more movement on the to the sound, even if it's a hi hat sound or a drum sound. You don't want it that very metallic. Hey, okay, here. Right. So uh, an another edit harmonics, very random noise noisy like waveform here on operator B. It is even better without the first harmonics. All right, operator C is another random harmonic. So very, very random, too many waveforms, too many harmonics to make it really chaos, really chaotic, because 
hi hat sounds hi hat sounds are really very chaotic, and this is the purpose. I mean, this is how you do it. And operator D is a simple saw wave, and if you remember, uh, operator D will modulate A, and on a very high course, 45. All right, we still have this high pace filtering because we don't want the low frequencies in a hi hat. Maybe you can leave it here. I really like this frequency, even if you don't hear it. But it definitely changes the sound. Some more, more dirt, more rust. All right, I like this. Let's stay, let's stick to around 500 hertz. All right, so some basic EQing, boosting up the highs. And as always, I like to use this frequency, sh frequency shifter plugin. It gives more rust to the sound. So cool. A chorus, if you want to make cool hi-hats, is your friend, really, because um, it turns the sound more, more organic, as I always say. Not like it, it without the chorus, it sounds like if you, I don't know, like if you hit a big metal chunk with a hammer or something. But with the chorus, it's more like hi hatty. All right, this transient mixer and the EQ is muted, so we don't need that. And some multi band dynamics, what? Where I only use one band and an upward compression, but on a very, very high level. To give more transient, this is why the attack time is so high at around four, five, eight, no, eight point eight. I think I was there. So this is only for the tech. Anyway, this was the hi hat. I hope it made sense. So. Just let's just go through one more time. If you want to make hi hats, you need to start with a with a sine wave or with some edit harmonics on a very high course. This is the main key here, the high course, and modulate it with other high frequency stuff. So basically, this is what I did here, because as I said, A is modulated by the B C group and D uh, at a, at the same time, but on a different routings. I mean, on a different way. Because, you know, we have operator A on a high course and operator D is on a very, very high course again. But operator B looks like if it is on, on course 1, but it is modulated again with a very high course oscillator. So basically what you can see here is a high course modulated with a high course oscillator and modulated again with a very high course oscillator with a saw wave, which is full of harmonics. So... This is what you do, what you want to create high heads, but you need, always need to work, um, but you always need to, to work with the levels. So if I turn all this stuff up, we will turn to regular noise. Okay, not now. But as you can hear, as I add these levels up, I, as, as I add these modulators, the sound turns into more noisy and less metallic, as you can hear. So this is how you play with the hi-hat, if you want to get the, the best balance between those metallic and those noisy sounds. Okay, so this was the hi-hat, and let's go to the clap sound, which is a little more complicated, because I used two layers. I have the low layer, I think this is the high layer, and the low layer, yeah. So the bottom one is the low layer, obviously, and the high one is the top layer. Maybe it will be enough just using the high. Oh. And sorry, I forgot to mention that in the hi-hat I used this little trick here. 
turn, you know, to switch between close hi hat and open hi hat. What I only did here is change the decay time of operator A. Here, this guy. So this is all. Opening the sound. I, I don't really like this sound on open version. It is. It sounds a lot better when you use it on closed. But anyway, let's get back to the clap. So we have two layers. No, it is better with the bottom version. So <clears throat> we don't have too many differences between the two versions. Only I, I believe only on the pitch. So let's start with the top because I think that is the main stuff here. Okay, so here we use these straight uh, routings. And uh, first, operator A is a simple sine wave with 0.5 course, which is modulated by a saw 6 on 10, course 10. Uh, the second, the third, yeah, the third operator, operator C, is a noise looped. What I told you, I always use that on course 29. And operator D is a simple sine wave, but I pushed the phase away a little, um, around 50 hertz, not hertz, sorry, 50%. Uh, I also use the phase pushing uh, on operator B and C2. All right, so I used the low pace filter, and this is the trick when you want to cl create claps. Because I don't know, <coughs> sorry, I had to change position on my chair. So if you want to make cool clap sounds, you want to make, uh, you want to use this LFO because, all right, how to demonstrate it, let's resample this clap. <coughs> hey, where is the audio? Okay, here is it. Let's resample this stuff. Resampling, record, play. Okay, so I'm sure if you saw any clap sample before, you saw some kind of stuff like this. We have this um, LFO shaped short percussion sound and the longer noisy kind of sound. So this is how this is how claps built. And I wanted to modulate, uh, I wanted to replicate this behavior using operator and I used an LFO for this. The stuff, uh, so how to express this, we have the basic waveform, we have the basic sound, which, I, which we just made here uh, using these operators and um, using an LFO on saw down mode, I tweak the filter <coughs> So we have this low pace filter and this modulation here is made by low pace filter based on the LFO movement. So you need to find the rate for the LFO, which is quite high and the amount, how to and how fast uh, it will modulate the filter. And as you can see, I didn't use anything else here. I disabled all A, B, C, D and only added the, uh, the filter as a goal as a destination to be mo to modulate it and this creates these these clappy clip I, I don't know how to call this these clappy stutters to the sound oh let's see what happens if i declick this lfo so as you can hear it's just a there there is no um, stuttering clappy sound which is really on made by the LFO as I told you before just very easily can be created and this saw down LFO shape is the key for it I also use some pitch envelope on the transient like always to make it more clappy and some spread to make it, you know, stereo wide. I got rid of the low because it sounds stupid, but maybe for some cases it can be held handy if you leave these frequencies. But I definitely recommend to go, I don't know, at around 100 Hertz and get rid of those sounds. So it won't conflict with, with any other instrument. But anyway, I use it around this, I don't know, 500 hertz. 
some overdrive, some phaser to shape the sound. Maybe you will like it more without the phaser. And some more saturation to, to you, you know, to bring up the whole sound, bring in front of the your front of your face into your face. And distortion and saturator, especially saturator, is very very handy tool for it. So you won't you won't only hear the click of the sound or the transient or whatever you call it, but the whole body comes up, comes closer to your face. And you won't be, uh, I mean, you shouldn't worry about, you know, distortion or, or anything because we are talking about claps, which are basically noises. It, it's, it's, a, it's a noisy type of sound, which it's not, it's not really, not really bad if you distort it. Even if we talk about a kick drum, for example, you need to be very careful with distortion, but that is a different topic. Let's get back to the clap. And another frequency shifting, what I love. So as you can hear, this gives the very, very character of the sound. If you don't like this or like more the, the sound without the frequency shifter, now this is a time where we definitely need to get rid of the lows. This is a cool sound again. And at the very end we have this grain delay, delay uh, tool, which, which gives more body, more tail and more stereo witness to the sound. I really like this stuff. The only problem with grain delaying this uh, these sounds is it will give a different result on every hit. So if you need, or if, 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 I mean, if you don't want this, you need to resample the sound what I just did here. And this way, the clap will always sound the same. All right, very easy stuff. Let's do it. And use this if you want. And you, and you will have the source file you know the thing here uh the the best thing here if you modulate i'm uh, oh, sorry it's a little late here <laughs> so if you create your own own sound using any kind of synthesizer like operator or, <clears throat> or your favorite synthesizer is you have this this clap you just drop it away go back tweak uh, one parameter And you have a different sound. Maybe it is not good for for a clap, but maybe for a percussion sound or for anything else, resampling for a Foley sound. You know, just be creative. Or for a layer for a vocal hit. I don't know. I didn't know what I did here, by the way. <laughs> In most of the cases, I don't know what I do. I just experiment, really. And and I, as I know, most of the producers out there do this, so I'm not worried about this at all. So I hope you enjoyed this little overview of making these drum sounds. I, oh, sorry, I forgot to show you the low band, um, the low layer, which is which is pretty much the same. We just looked on the top layer only, push down to minus 13 because the, the, the first one was on zero, and yes, the second one is on minus 13. Uh, I'm in a little trouble because I just tweaked this whole stuff here, so I can't compare <laughs> them properly. But looks like looks like they are already the same, so we don't need to worry about the whole stuff. And 
The best part here is that you can download this whole project file with with all the instruments and all the stuff. Of course, without these effects and the vocal loop because, oh, all right, I can give the, the, the effects sound, but not the vocal loop because it is not mine. Okay, so I don't want to run into copyright infringements. Anyway, so you can download the whole stuff uh, from the descriptions below and go try to experiment, make a full song. And if you did, or it, if it, or this whole uh, um, project inspires you for anything, I don't know, not for a full song or, or, or not for trap or anything like that, just please shoot me an email or, 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 or show me what you did here. I'm really curious what you did with my stuff or what you do with your, uh, with my stuff. And <clears throat> next time we will create some very, very exciting and cool stuff. So see you next time, guys. Please share my videos on Facebook, like, thumbs up, do anything what you can, what you can help me. Uh, I'm very thankful for it. So see you next time week. Uh, see you next week, guys. Bye-bye.